Welcome back. This one is a master class. So get your handy pencil, your handy pen, get some notes out. This one may lose some of you, so be sure to click rewind. And if you love it, share it, comment, you know what to do, subscribe. We're going to be touching on online buyer or seller seminars. Now you can use this for real estate. You can use this for anything, really. We're going to go into Facebook, Facebook events, Facebook lead ads, Zoom, and then we're going to touch on Eventbrite and also Zapier. Let's get started. Here's the fun part. Remember, this is a master class, so it's okay if I lose you and it's okay to click rewind. Here we go. So first things first, you have to create a graphic for what you're going to create. And for this purpose, I created a buyer academy and I'm going to share with you exactly the process I took to create this. But first I want to show you the finished product. And in two senses, number one, let's show you what I created here. Uh, we decided to call this buyers Academy and I'll show you the event page. I'm um, sorry, the Facebook page we created. This is the graphic. And then uh, we decided to run it on April 12th. And that was the graphic that we used for the ad. Let me show you the ad. This way you can get a better idea of what this all looks like. Now, let me show you the document that shows all of the downloads here. It's, it's important to see really, so you can get a better idea of everything that the information that we capture here, you can see a lot of information because uh, there's 56 of them or 58 in this case, 58 of them. But this is really the important stuff right here all the way down. Let's just highlight this little area so you can see uh, you've got IG, which stands for Instagram. FB stands for Facebook. That's where the lead was captured. You get their email address, usually a name, first or second, and a phone number. Now that's really important because now we can follow up with them and we can then talk to them and see what they want to do, right? And more importantly, invite them to the event that we're going to have online. So now that's the finished product, but there are other details. Let's get right into it, how I created it. So first I decided, let me look at Canva, right? So Canva, uh, this is what we did. We started kind of like with this. We're like, mm, maybe we should do this. And then we kind of morphed it into what you see here. Now here, let me explain to you when you're running a Facebook lead ad, when you're running a Facebook ad or even on Instagram, it's going to knock, it's going to knock you if you're putting too much words, too many words into it. So I want you to make sure that the picture is more prominent. You can see I had to edit this a few times. I had to shift this over this whole thing. You see this, I had to shift this over a few times until I figured out the right design so that it showed more of the picture and less of the words. So you're going to have to fool around with it, but it's, it's on Canva. And what I did is when I went to Canva, I just simply went see at the very top here, this is where you're at. I just chose an Instagram post. You can choose a Facebook post. Uh, you can have a lot of different options here. It's really easy. Uh, social media, click on social media right there. And you have all the choices. I would either choose Instagram post or Facebook post as soon as you do. Then it gives you all these other options on the left-hand side that you can mess around with or you can create your own like we did. Uh, we just created our own. So. Uh, Whichever one you choose, see, there it is, super easy. That's the first step. So you're gonna modify it and you're gonna say, okay, I've got a name, I've got the design, now I'm gonna build a Facebook business page, right? And let's go to the business page. Let me show you on Facebook what that looks like. So here you can see, if you click on this little Facebook icon, it'll take you to my main page. And this is Facebook, right? So now I'm on Facebook. If I want to create a page, I just go here, click create and click create page. Now we've been through this before when you're building groups. So if you missed that part, go to my other YouTube 
video that talks about creating Facebook groups and that go into creating Facebook pages as well. But for the purpose of this, let's assume you know how to do this. You click on page, it's gonna take you to create one. And here, let me show you mine. We named it Buyers Academy. And Buyers Academy. Now, you can go to Buyers Academy for this purpose. I created a business page for buyers because we're gonna run a lot of first time home buyer seminars. That's the reason I created Buyers Academy. I could switch it over to just buyer seminars or online buyer seminars, but once we start doing more in-person ones, I didn't want it to just be online, so that's why we named it Buyers Academy. Now, here, uh, I added a picture here, and I added a picture here, right? But more importantly, I thought of a name. For me, it was Buyers Academy. For you, it can be Sellers Academy. It could be uh, my friend, Kimberly Meserve has one that's called a, a brews and buying, like brews as in like alcohol brews, brews and buying. And so you can create different things here. You see, this is our first iteration of it. Uh, this is our, our second one, did really well. And we can go from there. I'm gonna show you now how to do a few different things because number one, I want you to be able to do the simple parts and I want you to also be able to do the more complicated one. The easiest thing to do is to build an event right here from this page. And all you do, once this is done, you've built the page out, you put the right icons, you now understand what your branding is. You go to this section where it says write a post, right above it is this section that says events. Now you click on event and it's gonna say, awesome. What event do you wanna create? Well, my event, I want to name it Online Buyer Seminar, just to have it. And then uh, let's put, uh, you know what, let's, let's call it Amazing, just so I can find it easier. Amazing Online Buyer Seminar. Here you'll learn a lot about buying a home. Now, I don't want you to have that as a description. I'm doing that just simply to do it quickly. Categories, I usually choose home. Uh, where's home here? There's home. Or you can use other, you scroll all the way down, you can go to other. I, I don't usually choose anything else, but if you feel like choosing something else, go ahead. Uh, this is specifically for real estate. You can use it for anything really. Now it occurs once, yes, I don't want it to be reoccurring because I don't know if I'm going to do it every weekend, but for, the, for this one, I'm gonna run it, let's say tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to run it at 5 p.m. Pacific time, and it ends at, let's put it ends at 6 p.m. Pacific time. This way, we're done, ready to go. Any co-host, not today. And my schedule, uh, schedule, no, no need to do that. Now, here's the important part, admission. Now, here's where we can connect it to Eventbrite. You can add a ticketing link. You can even just add a confirmation so that it counts down for you. Uh, this is this one. See, if I click on this one, it's going to say, well, how many spots are available? This way we can count down. And are there any questions you want them to answer? Like, are you a first time home buyer? Do you need to sell a home before you buy one and so forth? You can definitely have that. Those are okay. I've run those in the past and they're okay, not bad. And then you have this option, create a ticket. This is where you can connect it to your Eventbrite page. And I'll show you my Eventbrite page right here. See Eventbrite account, it's connected, right? I can disconnect it. Now, in order to connect it, it would just say, hey, connect it, but you need to have an Eventbrite page. Now over here, you can see I have, this is how the Eventbrite page looks. Now we just ran it, so this one is no longer live because you can go here. Uh, this is the page, anybody who lands on it would then click on details and then it would capture their information or they would have to write it in. You see, this event has ended though. So you, what you wanna do is create an event, specify the time and date, and then as soon as they click on this section that says details, they would then go into a section that says, okay, how many tickets do you want? One, two, and they would say, great, thank you. And then it would say, okay, well, give me your information. First name, last name, email address, cell phone number. You can even ask for their address. Once it's all done, they're registered, and then you can send them a link to the online 
seminar, which is what we'll get to. I just wanted to touch, touch on Eventbrite because uh, some people don't know they can build it out here and connect it to Facebook. Well, now you know it's quite easier than you think. You just go to Eventbrite, and here I'll go back to Eventbrite, and let's say you're new to Eventbrite and you've never done anything, I would just log out. There we go, log out. You go to Eventbrite. This is how you spell it, E-V-E-N-T-B-R-I-T-E. -E. And then you say, well, I'm new to this, so can you, can I, can I sign in for the first time? Right, I can even sign in as with, with uh, my Facebook login account, which I probably would recommend. It would make it a lot easier for Facebook. So that's how I would do it. You go to Eventbrite. Once it's connected, then you go here and connect it right here if you want people to get tickets through here. Now, some people do it this way and they love it. Uh, other people don't do it. So let's say we uh, confirm and delete that. The other option is add a ticket link. So here, if you want to ticket people through a different route, I've seen people put in a Zoom link here to the Zoom webinar. And now once the webinar is ready on your Zoom, you could just grab that link, put it there. So when people click on it, then they could register for the event right there. So they could get a link and then show up. Now that's how I've seen it done. Uh, I've, other, I've seen other ways, but that has been really the easiest. So let's say uh, we want to go with just this right here, just to simplify it. Uh, I'm going to limit it to 50 people, maximum five per person. I say no need, two, two is fine, it's online. And I want to ask one question. Uh, are you looking to buy in the next 90 days, right? Question, easy, done, right? Beautiful. Allow guests to message Buyers Academy about their reservation. I would love that. It's probably the best thing to do. Now, as I click publish, it's gonna publish it into its own event page that's tied to Buyers Academy. Now here, so don't get it confused here because I have a lot of people confuse these two and say, well, where's my event, right? Well, it actually created a whole separate page for you. Now it's under the event section. See, I called it amazing online buyer seminar. Here are the details. I can share it, right? I can invite friends. I could share it through messenger and I can get ready to go. I only have 50 spots, right? And I can do a lot of other things here. I can start posting here, getting people excited. I could even start inviting certain people to this. And so people can show up. Now, the first thing I'd like to do probably is anybody else that's going to co-host it with me, I would probably share it. Now, the other option, which I've shown you before, is boost event. I can actually boost the event too, which is nice. This is, uh, if I wanted to boost it, the thing that I'm looking for, just to make sure that this is a special category, so special ad category, you see, because it's housing. It's not under employment. It's under housing. Uh, you want to make sure you click that so that your ad gets approved. And let's say I wanted to run it for five days. Oh, if it starts working, there it is. Five days, uh, you know, end date. Oh, I can't run it for five days because my event's tomorrow. So I could only run it for one day in this case. But I would run it for about five days, maybe put $5 behind it or $10 behind it, and then I would boost it. Uh, in this case, I don't want to boost it, but that's an option for you. That's a really good option. Now, once you're done here, you can go back to your business page and see Buyers Academy is already up there because it remembered my search. Now I have it ready to go. So because I just created it, it's going to be here. I have two events. Uh, I was testing this out earlier for a friend. And then here's mine right here. I can, all of the events are right here. Now, some people are like, oh my gosh, Tristan, I don't, uh, I, I don't want to do it. I messed up. Uh, is there any way to delete it? So yes, there is. You click on it. Now it takes you to this event page. You're going to go here and you're on the top right, three buttons, uh, three little dots. And then you see where it says cancel event. When you cancel events, it's going to give you two options. One is to cancel. The other one's to delete. I want to delete it. Now I'm only going to have one event, which is the amazing event, right? So go back. It's going to take me to my screen. Here it is again, Buyers Academy. And I go down, you see I only have one event. Now that's the way to do it if you wanted to run it by you sharing it, by boosting it, not by capturing leads like I was showing you over on this screen. 
Now to do this, it's gonna require a lot more. Well, let's get into that one. Let's try to build that one from scratch. And just bear with me on this one. I may lose you, so it's okay to rewind. Now the first thing you wanna do is hover over to create. You see the create section, you're gonna go where it says add. Under add, you're gonna click on it, and then you're gonna wait for the ads manager to load. It's gonna say, whoa, welcome to ads manager. It doesn't really say that, but that's what I imagine. So it says, welcome to ads manager. What do you wanna do? Well, the only thing I wanna want to do out of all of these choices is lead generation. That's it. That's the only one here that I'm interested in. That's the only one right now that you're interested in. Click on lead generation. And then at the very top over here, you see all of a sudden special ad category. Yes, you are creating a special ad category and it is with housing. If you miss this one, it's going to continually deny your ad. Please don't miss this. Housing category. It's not employment. It's not credit. It's housing. Have to repeat it because it happens every day to everybody here. Lead generation. Now, you want to name it something along the lines as uh, amazing. Well, you know, whatever you want to name it. I'm naming it amazing online buyer seminar. That's what I'm going to name it just so I can keep track of it. That's the campaign name. I am not going to A-B test. Do not worry about that right now. And my, I'm going to change it from a daily budget to a lifetime budget of, I usually run two to $300 a week if I'm going to do this. So uh, let's just go with 200 and we're going to go on continue. Easy, right? So far, so good. Easy, no problem. Next is, what are, what are you going to name this ad set? Well, it's an ad set. I want to name it uh, online buyer seminars, right? This way I know they're under my online buyer seminars. Easy. Now, next thing you want to do is make sure that your Facebook business page is the right one, right? For this case, yes, I want to run it under Buyers Academy. That's the one I want to run. Uh, I, I know some of you have other business pages. Make sure that that's there. That's really important. You don't want to run it under the wrong one. Uh, next thing you want to do is you want to skip these. Please skip the dynamic creative and catalog. This does not apply to you right now. Next thing you want to do is audience. So the reason we had to choose the housing section under uh, before on the other screen is because it it really determines who we can target because uh, there were a lot of issues that Facebook went through. Uh, you can Google it. It uh, has to do with Cambria Analytica. But for now, we want to go here and we want to choose people that are local to me, right? Uh, I'm in uh, Malibu, so I want to just choose, uh, let's say I want to choose, uh, I want to choose a radius of Minimum is, is 15 mile radius, that's my minimum. So I wanna choose Agora Hills, which is kind of right in the middle. And if I do that, it captures both sides of where I want. Now I know it's a 15 mile radius, I can increase it, but I can't decrease it. There you go, see, 15 mile radius. And I'm good with that, I'm fine with that. Now I do want some other details that I possibly can change, right? I want to have a little bit more, uh, information as to who I'm targeting. So let's go to this section right here. And I'm going to see if I can click here and add a couple of things just to make this number over here to the right a little smaller than a million two hundred thousand people, right? I want to minimize it. And let's say I want people that are searching for Zillow or interested in Zillow. I want those people. Right now, it narrowed it down to 240,000. That's not bad. I like that number, right? It still gives Facebook the ability to go and search to see who loves what. I can even break it down more, or more importantly, I can go to the suggestion section. This, if I click it, it's going to give me other suggestions. This way, I don't have to think about, wait, wait a second, which one? Uh, this was a lot easier. Well, let's see, house hunting, first-time home buyers, real estate, Property Finder, it has a lot of choices. I usually like to choose anywhere between one to three because I like Facebook deciding the algorithm itself. They're much smarter than I am. They touch on different points. So I'm going to say, let's pick on, real estate is quite a big number. Let's just pick 
real estate. It gives me a little bit more, the little bar still in the middle. That's not too bad, 490,000. Let's go from there. Two choices are good. Now I'm gonna scroll down placement. I want it to be placed everywhere. If I click on manual, it's gonna give me the choices. Do you want it on Instagram? Do you want it on Facebook? Where do you want it? Well, look, I want it everywhere. And I want you, Facebook, to decide where am I getting most of the leads from? Now, I'm gonna stop here for a second just to show you one thing here. When I was, uh, let me check here. Yeah, I'm gonna share with you this other document so you could, so I can show you where everybody came from originally. And I chose, see, this is this, the document. You see IG, 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 FB, IG, IG. A lot of people came from Instagram, more than I originally thought. And if I would have stopped Facebook from deciding, hey, Facebook, only target Facebook instead of Instagram or any other thing that you own, I wouldn't have been able to target all these people on Instagram and get these great, amazing people. So there's that. So let Facebook decide where they're going to target. Don't decide for it. Let's go back here. Now, I just want to run it for about a week. Uh, let's say it starts today. I'm going to say it starts tomorrow in the morning. Usually takes Facebook anywhere between 12 to 24 hours to run ads for you. They have to check them, make sure they, they match everything. I would say I don't mind it starting tomorrow at 6 a.m. That gives them enough time. And what I would do is I want it to end on Saturday at night, probably like 11.30 p.m. This way I know it's running this whole week and I can get some good buyers from it, uh, possible buyers from it who are attending this webinar. So that's it. This is that section, sorry, zooming in there. This is that section, we're ready here. I've narrowed it down. Now I'm gonna go to the next page. Now, this page is where you start creating the ad, right? What you wanna do, again, is make sure that you've got this connected to, this page connected to the right page, Buyers Academy. And over here, if you do have an Instagram page that you wanna connect it to, then you make sure you connect it to that one. If not, don't worry. Facebook is still gonna run it to Instagram. Even if you don't have an Instagram page, it'll still run it on Instagram. That's the beautiful thing. So for us, I haven't created an Instagram page and I'm still running it on Instagram. Next, here you either want to do a carousel ad, which I know runs better normally, or a single image. Now I've been running a single image one only because I didn't have enough pictures for my carousel because we've only run this one time and we've done quite amazing. And so I'm going to leave it as a single image so I can show you what we do. Over here, then, it gives you the media section. Well, let's upload a video or an image. I'm going to upload an image, but I already have the image I want because I've uploaded it before. Here it is, right? So I'm just going to re-click it. In this case, if you didn't have it, you would just click on Upload and find it from your desktop. Easy, right? No problem. Just make sure that it's made. I showed you. Go to Canva. Now that I've chosen it, I'm going to click it, and then I'm going to click Continue. As I click continue, there it is. It's got it all done. Look at that. Looks great. This is how it looks. Right in the middle, you can see it's telling you how it looks everywhere, right? And so far, I like it. It looks good. Uh, here's how it looks on Instagram, on the Instagram feed, right? Here's how it looks on stories, looking good. Um, and then desktop news feed, that's how it looks. So you can take a look just to make sure it looks good everywhere. Facebook deals with all those details, so you have nothing to worry about on that section. Uh, the next thing you wanna do is make sure that you have the right copy, right? So if you're coming up with the right copy for the seminar, just make sure that it's not too wordy and you, you, um, you just maybe use a few emojis here and there. So you look at the primary text, you, you say here, look, let me write this down, online, uh, first time. You see that, that's the, that's the primary text up here. Now that's where you wanna explain, I copy pasted it because I already had it from before, um, but I wanna run it. Uh, I think this next, this next Sunday is going to be the 20, oh, the 19th. All right, so we're gonna have another one on the 19th. So we're gonna do April 19th. 
So our free online first time buyer seminar, which I think is a mouthful already, but uh, will be on April 19th. Our plan is to set up a live stream, break rate, all that good stuff. Uh, we can do that. I might change it to online buyer seminar. Much easier. I love little emojis. Now here you could put a headline, it'll go at the bottom, right? You wanna make sure that people know it's free. So, you, so free online buyer seminar. And then you can add, uh, you can add some emojis, right? There you go. I added one little emoji. I like the fire emoji. I know some people like the little heart emoji. Um, but I think if I added a second emoji, it would push me back down. So let's just keep it to one emoji. This is obviously on the mobile newsfeed. That's where most people look on the uh, newsfeed. Let's go look at, take a look at the Instagram feed, see how it looks there. So far, so good. And Instagram stories. So far, so good. I like it. So let's go back here. Now, the description. What's the description? What, what, tell me a little bit about it, right? Uh, well, I think the description is going to be that it's a first time home buyer seminar. Right, learn everything important about buying a home. That's it. Easy. Uh, you'll see as I add that, it's going to add it right underneath that. So most people gravitate to this first, then maybe this, then go up here. So you're fine. Uh, display link. I don't, I don't need a display link. Do I need people to sign up here? Yes, I need them to sign up because I'm going to create a lead ad, right? So I want them to sign up for the webinar. And so I'm going to click on that and leave it as sign up. I could say book now, or I could say learn more, but sign up is more direct, right? I'm asking them to sign up for something. Well, you know what? We can do learn more. They click on learn more. It'll take them to another one as well. But you see what happened to my little fire? It got pushed because learn more is too big. Let's go to sign up. I just like that much better. All right, so now here's the fun part. Here is what I love. Uh, here is what uh, I'm going to create it from scratch just to show you the cool stuff that Facebook has. Here I'm going to go to create new form. Now these are the questions that I'm going to ask. This is going to this is how I'm going to capture their information so that it sends it to me. So here I'm going to go to new form. And I'm going to go to, I'm going to keep it to more volume. If I have higher intent, it requires them to swipe again. More volume is super easy. Let's keep, let's keep it at more volume. That's good. Intro, it's optional. I'm going to just not do the intro. I want to just go directly into, hold on, here we go. I want to go directly into, eh, let's do a headline, fine. Headline text is um, join us on join us this Sunday, right? That's right here. You see that it popped up over here. Now it, it's going to say, well, what's the layout like? Don't worry about that. Sign up by providing your info below. It's already going to capture their info, but I do need more information from them. So the form type uh, is going to give us information that we need from them. And here, here's the good part. Okay, watch this. The questions you can ask information from them that Facebook will supply to you if Facebook already has it. So the first things I look for, obviously, full name, email, and I want phone number, right? There you go, phone number. That's usually what I keep it to. I don't ask for more information, but I do ask questions like, are you looking to buy in the next 90 days? Do you need to sell a home? If you ask these questions, people will you have the option of for them to fill it out or for you to ask multiple choice questions. You see, well, let's do one just so we can do a multiple choice one, right? Here we go. Uh, do, would you like to buy a home in the next 90 days? Question mark. Answer yes, right? Or no, click enter and then it gives you the choices. Uh, and that's, what we have right there, privacy policy. Uh, what I typically do is I grab the privacy policy from uh, my current website. And if you don't have one, uh, I usually just say, look, your, your broker has one. So my broker is Keller Williams, right? So Keller 
Williams there, it is world class. They have a privacy policy already at the bottom and you can definitely capture it from them at the very bottom of everything. You can see privacy policy, everybody's got one. Just grab that link and then go back to Facebook and there you go. Oops, the text, it's on the link, right? So you would just type in privacy policy, easy. Uh, and you can have a custom disclaimer, you don't have to, uh, but thank you screen, you can say thank you, you're all set. Now let them know what they're gonna receive, right? Or what's gonna happen next, which is uh, you'll receive, for us, you'll receive a link, you'll receive a link for the webinar on Sunday, or seminar, right? Seminar on Sunday, and we'll, be reaching out to say hello. Easy, except for some reason, I spelled hello with three L's. Okay, view website. Here you can also put in a link at the very bottom so people can take a look at your site, whatever that is for us. Um, I have a few different sites. The one that comes to mind is Your California Realty, and I'm gonna use that link, copy it, and paste it at the bottom. Now, I'm gonna take a look just to make sure everything's right because once you click finish, you can't go back to edit this. It's done. Um, so if you mess up, you just have to start this over. But here we go, uh, one, two. So as soon as they click on the picture, what happens is join us this Sunday. Sign up by providing your info below. Email, full name, phone number. Now would you like to buy a home in the next 90 days? Oh, yes, I would, right? We'll get that information next. After they do that, that's the privacy policy. By clicking submit, you agree to send your info to Buyers Academy, blah, 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 blah. Next, uh, thanks, you're all set. You'll receive a link for the seminar on Sunday and we'll be reaching out to say hello. So that's the finished product. That's, that's how it looks. Finish it and it looks like we forgot an intro. Uh, layout paragraph. Okay, so uh, we'll just type in something along the lines of what we did before, which was the Buyers Academy. Uh, let's see, we'll see you on Sunday to go over the process of purchasing a home in California, right? Easy, now we're ready. Okay, now we can finish uh, and then we'll go. So that next screen, now we grab that one. You see, that's my choice. I've created other ones before. That's ready to go. Now let's make sure over here everything's set. In some cases, you do have to put in uh, information over here. If your business page doesn't have your office information, I would always put uh, Keller Williams World Class, and then I put license number. You can put your license number. If you don't know it, remember, I, I went to, where was my Keller Williams site? Here it was, go to Keller. You could just find your office brokerage info and then you can just find it there. I'm gonna type in hours, which is zero, zero, one, three, seven, three, four, four, four. And then you can put in your address I know some of you need to put in the address, Russell Ranch Road, number 200, Westlake Village, California, right, 91362. All right, so that's, that's my address for my office in Westlake Village. I'm all set. I also have it on my business page. Now, once you're ready to go, you can click on confirm. Once I click confirm, though, it's going to go. Now, I'm going to show you a few other things as to what's going to happen once we're done. So just making sure it all looks good. I don't have any spelling errors because if I do, I'm going to have to shut it down and then restart it. Uh, let's just click next. Confirm. So now it's going to send it to Facebook and Facebook's going to think about it for about half of a day and let you know half of a day from now. Okay, it's working. It's not working. You see draft. It's going to go from draft to re in review. And then I can start taking a look. It'll notify me once it's ready to go or if it's been rejected. And I can edit here uh, and then just go from it here. So that looks good. 
Let's go back to this one. You can see set ad reviews delayed due to coronavirus. So we know that's been happening. It's it's just part of what's been happening. It's it's part of everything. Here's the last ad that I ran that I was telling you about. So you see, you're all you're all set to go once that's ready, and then you start getting some leads. Uh, you would have to click on click on that because some people are going to be like, "Where do I get my leads?" But I'm going to show you a trick. You click on that, so you know which one it is, and then you click on Ad Set for Campaigns. Uh, to take a look at it individually, or you can go to ads for one campaign, and then you see how this is highlighted in blue, right? That means this is highlighted in blue as well. You can go to here and you can check now and download the CSV file, right? So I'll show you that again. It's easy once you're here, and I'm sorry, once you're here in campaigns, I've selected just one, the one that I want, right? And then I go here to ads, it says one is selected. And then I would go here, open it up, take a look at it. Now there are other details I can go to. If I go to a campaign here, I can go and view chart and I can take a look at where I got most of these people from the demographics. See, most of them were women, uh, less men. Ages 25 to 44, uh, I got a lot of. So 25 to 34 was a good bulk. And then 35 to 44. Now you remember I also, I also got a lot of people from Instagram. Remember that? Look at that. Instagram, Facebook. So these are great stats that'll show you some amazing things for, for yourself. Now, let me show you what else you can do, which is to me, one of the coolest things ever. So you're going to go back to your business page. Let's go to Buyers Academy. And here you're going to go to Publishing Tools. It's at the top up here. Sometimes you have to click more to find it. But in this case, it's already showing for me, publishing tools. So now I'm gonna to go to publishing tools and I'm gonna to scroll to the left, I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna to go to a section called lead setup. Lead setup is gonna allow me to connect my CRM so that these leads get put into my CRM. In this case, it's already set up, you see? Follow up boss connected through Zapier. Now, if it wasn't, here, you'd get a little shot at it and say, okay, well, please connect. You connect, you click connect, and then it opens up Zapier right here. And let me show you what Zapier is. Let me see if I have that open. And I'll show you exactly what Zapier looks like so that you can start the connection. And uh, really, Zapier is something you should have if you don't have it already. And I'm going to see if I can, yeah, there it is, perfect. So I'm gonna show you what Zapier looks like just so that you understand the capabilities. If you don't have a Zapier account, it's free. I think it lets you do one zap, which is not that much. So uh, you would need to upgrade it to that next amount. And the pricing is not that much. Once you're in, so I've logged into Zapier. Here I am. And I'm going to go to a section called Zaps. It says make a zap. I can make a zap or just go to Zaps, right? I want to make a zap. And I'm going to simplify it. Well, we know that the Facebook, we want a Facebook lead to go into follow up boss, right? And then I want to take it one step further. I want the follow up boss lead that I got from Facebook to go into Zoom as well, because I want them to register. That's our last part to this. So first thing is Facebook lead ad, right? I need to be premium on this. So you need to pay for it. Facebook lead ad, correct. New lead, correct. I want to continue. Yes, right? But I want to connect it to mine. Yeah, of course I do. That's mine, right? This account is expired. I need to have to connect it. So I would have to go and connect it. Easy, just have to re-log in. No problem. The next thing I wanted to do, though, is I wanted to go into follow a boss. I type, start typing follow a boss. Easy, right? Look, if you don't have follow a boss and you have something else like, um, now let's see if I think it, it does have Chime. Yeah, you can connect it into Chime. You can connect it into so many things. I have Follow Boss and Chime. So now what I want it to do, I want it to create a new inquiry on my website. Or what do you want? I want it to create a new inquiry on my website. So continue. Now I have to sign in for Follow Up Boss, right? But that would be it. Now I got Facebook lead ad, right? Gets dumped into Follow Up Boss. And then it gets dumped into Zoom. Well, what do you want it to do in Zoom? Well, I want it to create a new registrant. Easy, right? For my webinar. Once I click next and continue, this is okay. Great. Sign into Zoom and give me the link. 
So now you see I've got Facebook to follow a boss, to Zoom, and then you're done. So now the thing is you wanna to go to Zoom and let me show you what to do on Zoom because there's a lot of amazing things you could do on Zoom. I'm on Zoom right here, I've logged in as me. You can see now, uh, I'm going to create a webinar and I'm gonna call it, oh, I'm on Lab Code Agents webinar, give me a second. Just gonna log out and log into the right Zoom account. Give me a second, and here we go. All right, so now I'm in the right Zoom account. I'm gonna create a webinar called Buyers Academy. Well, let's name it, what was it, amazing? Uh, probably one name it, really amazing, but a Buyers Online, here we go. Online Buyer Seminar. Thought we were in August, April 19th, right? Here we go. Uh, learn the process of buying a home in Southern California with a top team from Los Angeles, right? So we have this dated on the 19th and ours is gonna be at 1 p.m. Pacific. Here are some things I need you to do in your Zoom account. I have the webinar Zoom account that holds up to 100 people for this one, and I have the minimum price of $14.99 one. So I need you to have those because what you need to do is when you go here, you want to have the host on, the panelist on. No, you don't have to do it then. More importantly, you need to, you need to enable the practice session because if you don't, it'll start the webinar like that and everybody who's logged in can see you. You need to enable that. And then you click on record the webinar automatically. Yes, please do that. You don't want to forget. When you schedule it, you're going to have some more options. You're going to scroll down and you're going to say no registration required. But the thing is, if you edit right here, you want to do registration required, automatically approved. What happens is now you can text this link and it'll request specific questions from people and it'll show you who's registered here. This way you can keep track. You can export or download the list of people who register. You can share this link. You see this link now? Now if I share it, which I've copied it, if I share it, here, let me show you what happens when I share it onto, uh, let's say I'm going to share it to myself on by text, right? So I'm going to go and share it to you. I'm going to show you my texting on my computer. And see here, I'm going to share it with myself. And then all of a sudden it has this cool little uh, logo that I put in already and people can register from there. Really easy, really nice. Let's go back to uh, Safari here uh, on. Now, this is the thing you need to look for when it comes down to Zoom and changing this one thing, that's the most important thing. So first you go to your Zoom account, you go to a section in settings. When you're in settings, you're gonna have other choices here. You see schedule meeting and meeting basic and meeting advanced. You want to go to in meeting advanced. Now, as you click on in meeting advanced, it'll take you all the way down. You still scroll a little bit further down. And as you scroll, you're gonna find something here. It says allow live streaming in meeting. So, let me zoom in there for you so you can take a look at that. You need to check this so it's blue. So it's currently activated. As you activate it, then you click on the ones you want, Facebook, Workplace Facebook, YouTube, and custom live streaming if you have software that allows you to stream through your computer or through a DSLR or through any other source or camera. Now, I, I like to leave just the Facebook one on. Sometimes I've tested it out on Workplace and it works in YouTube. I love having as a backup when Facebook doesn't work for me. And believe it or not, right now, Facebook's probably work, not working every 10 days because they're updating so much and so is Zoom. So turn on Facebook, turn on YouTube, then you can live stream through there. That's what I need you to do. So then what's going to happen is it opens up this screen on Zoom and it's going to give you a choice at the bottom right with three little dots where it says more and you're going to be able to share it onto Facebook. Now, let me show you how it looks. I can't show you the screen right now because it's my screen, 
but I'm going to share it onto Facebook and I want to share that screen with you to show you what that looks like. So you see this, as soon as I click on share onto Facebook, that's the option that I turned on. And this is why I need it because it says share on timeline. I'm going to click on that. More importantly, it says share in an event. I can run this webinar, this meeting, whatever, into the event page. And when I click on event, guess what's going to pop up here, right? My amazing online buyer seminar. Now, if I click next, it'll give me an extra window as to what I want to title and uh, when I want to go live right there. So uh, it's going to say, what's the title? And so as you know, the title is going to be online buyer seminar. Uh, join us as we talk about buying your buying a home in Southern California, blah, 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 blah. You can type in all that good stuff, type in the title. As soon as you click go live, it's going to go live in the event page. And that's the key right there going live into the event page. So just in case people didn't register to go online, but you have their information, right? Because they decided to show up on the event. You can also run it live in the event. And I would highly, highly recommend that, that you do that only because it's extremely important that you put it out in as many places as possible. So to recap, you need to go to Canva or publisher or something where you can create a graphic. That's number one. Next, you go to Facebook business page uh, or your Facebook page and create a business page, a page out of this event, out of this thing that you're going to routinely do, whether it's for buyers, sellers, or for whatever you're doing. Next, you're going to then decide that you're going to want to create an event out of this and say you want to either connect it to Eventbrite or do exactly what I showed you as a buyer uh, as a lead ad, right? And then I showed you where to go to get all of those leads. If you want to connect it to your CRM, you can. If you want to then have that connect to Zoom, you can. Uh, the key is to actually do this. Now, if you want to follow the path that I gave you, great. If you want to simplify it and just simply run Zoom into an event page, you can. That's probably the easiest thing to do and you'll get a good result from that. It's just a challenge capturing that person or those people's information. So now as we wrap up, the final process to this is actually the presentation. So one of the things that we did is we created slides online. Um, we used Google Slides, so slides.google.com. And what we did is we created them here so we can share them with the whole team, with my team. And this way, anytime any of us change anything or adapt to anything, uh, it, the changes are made for everybody. And let me show you exactly what we did. So uh, once everybody is signed up, we go on Zoom and then we're ready to go and we welcome everybody. Hey, thanks for coming. We appreciate you being on. This is what we're going to cover. And then we get into the presentation, which is this one. This is how it looks. And then we go into it. This is, we call it the Buyer's Academy, obviously. We do it with our mortgage broker or mortgage friend. And then we go into the process. Hey, this is the process. This is what you should expect. And then just to give you an idea that there are 14 steps, we go over initial buyer's consultation and then step the pre-approval. This is where our lender comes in. He does this with us. He goes over all the process. And then we go over renting versus buying. Step three, let's go shopping, talking about that. Placing an offer, how that looks. And we pause and we have questions. And then we go into escrow, how escrow works, earnest money, and the lending steps at this point, that's still part of the earnest money. Home inspection is really important. We have a lot of questions on this one, uh, but the home inspection, how much does the home inspection cost, all that good stuff. And then questions, number eight, request for repairs. Uh, this is where we go into a little bit on contingencies as well, you'll see, but requests for repairs are really important. And it's, it's important to really set the expectations from the beginning and that's where we do it. Then you go for the appraisal, our lender goes into this. Obviously you can have an attorney on here as well. Here are the loan contingencies. Remember we're doing this for California. So make sure that it's, it's according to how your state works. Then we do the final walkthrough and then number 12 and 13, sign loan docs, fund, then record. And number 14, we give you your keys and celebration. Um, 
what we do then, we say, hey, anybody have any questions? But that's how we end it. It takes about an hour and we have a couple of our agents on. I'm on only to answer questions and to introduce everybody. And then we have our lender there as well, just so that we have somebody else um, that can answer questions that may come from a, a different angle. So just note that be prepared. Uh, this is really a, a multiple step process and it can get a little lengthy, but like I said before, we've tried to simplify it so that you can make this happen. If you just wanna create an event on Facebook, run it live through Zoom, get, get the easiest Zoom, a lowest price tier on Zoom, make sure that you can do a webinar, right? And then run it through events and then you're done. You can send out the link to your friends, to your sphere on your CRM. You could do it that way and then use a presentation like the one I just showed you. Does, it does take some time to create. This was a team effort and I was mostly in charge of running the ads on Facebook, but it took the whole team. And so that's the presentation for you. If you have any questions, which you may, make sure to comment below and make sure to subscribe, share this. Remember, it's a masterclass, so I don't expect you to learn this all in one go. I do, though, ask you this. Please share this. Please subscribe and help me grow my channel. Appreciate it.